Okay, it's just a nightmare. Okay. Did that really sleep that long? Oh well, time to review a Schwarzenegger film today. That ought to be fun. I already wrote a review script? That's... bizarre. Well, uh, I can roll with it. Well, first things first, there's gotta be some video game adaptations they can play first, right? Uh, nothing? Oh. Well... Damn, I guess we'll just start watching then. First things first, this movie was directed by Roger Spottiswood. However you pronounce that. Who's that? Well, this work seemed to range all over the map, anywhere from 100% to 4% on Rotten Tomatoes, from movies like Shoot to Kill, Tomorrow Never Dies, and all the way down the ladder to Stop or My Mom Will Shoot. How bad is that? Well, Stallone himself said it was the worst film he was ever in, saying a flatworm could write a better script, and it was one of the worst films in the solar system, including alien productions we've never seen. Yikes. This has the same director be very afraid. Will this be the equivalent for good old Arnold? Only one way to find out. Let's dive right into the sixth day. Well, we start off with normal looking Columbia and Phoenix Pictures logos. No alarm bells yet. For those who are at all biblically inclined, you'll probably know the title of the movie is a reference to the sixth day of creation, when God created man. If you didn't, don't worry, the movie helpfully tells you. Thanks, it's not like the Bible is the most read book ever. Oh no, wait, it is. Well, at least it's not giving us a huge beginning exposition. Uh, no, wait, it kind of is. Oh boy, here's the alarm bells. At least it didn't feel the need to read it to us. Still, yellow alert. This game, uh, sorry, I'm used to reviewing games. This movie was made in the year 2000, after they did the cloning on Dolly the Sheep and the Human Genome Project was well underway. The rest of it they just flat out made up, but hey, that's sci-fi for you. Trust me, I know I'm currently writing a sci-fi story. According to the insert that came with the DVD version of this movie, they originally planned to have this movie take place 20 years in the future, which is about, you know, 6 years from now. But then they changed it to, in the near future, sooner than you think. <laughs> yeah, sure. Kind of pretentious, though it is still more a realistic version of the future than a lot of sci-fi movies. But still, it's been 15 years after this movie was made, I'll keep bringing shit up, don't worry. First we start in this XFL game. Yeah, that was their first mistake in predicting the future. They thought the XFL would last more than one season. I thought my DVD was scratched or something being from Goodwill and all, but no, I think this is how they edited it. At first we follow a $300 million a year quarterback named Johnny Phoenix. I'm going to assume either Simon Phoenix is some relative, or that's an analogy for what Phoenix Pictures thought they'd make off this movie. <laughs> Sorry, you're making a profit, but not that much. Apparently in the future, we'll also have heads-up displays in the helmets. Won't that be incredibly distracted? Oh. Well, there we go. So Johnny has crushed vertebrae, but that's covered up and the public is told his injuries are minor and he'll be back to playing shortly. After they kill him. Yeah, you can kind of guess what's going on here, given the premise of the movie. Then we cut to our everyman, Adam Gibson, played by Arnold. Which, yeah, Arnold, you took the role because you wanted to play an everyman character, but you're not fooling anyone. We know you'll kick ridiculous amounts of ass somewhere in this movie. You're Arnold, there's just no getting around that. Good morning, Adam. Also in this future, apparently we won't have iPhones. Our bathroom mirrors will remind us of everything for the day. Imagine the pranks you could pull with that thing. How long before this tech goes Rule 34 on us? Hold that thought, it won't be too long. Lock the door. Oh, oh well, we don't need technology for that, apparently. This went that direction quick, huh? Ooh, that takes cock blocker to a whole new level. Seriously, between this and Total Recall, what's with the high amounts of testicular abuse in these Schwarzenegger sci-fi movies? So we see Arnold acting like the lovable everyman he wanted to as their dog, Oliver, lies sickly on the couch while a commercial for Repet plays. Real subtle foreshadowing there, guys. I'm gonna assume after that business, they branched off and made a recall. Nacho flavored or Ew, nacho flavored bananas? Thank you. you know, maybe they're on to something. This is a sci-fi movie and once in a while they predict the future, so who knows? Maybe cheese and bananas is the next big thing. Oh. God, no. Uh, nope, not happening. Oh. So after that disgusting bit of... 
Oh, hold on. God, it's... Oh, it's bacon-flavored. God. Oh. 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 Real food. Seriously, who needs Christmas would be my salvation? <laughs> Anyways, after using our Sims-style grocery tracking fridge, which admittedly would be pretty handy, him and his friend take off for Double X Charter, their snowboarding tour business, and the guy brings up his virtual girlfriend. And your primary relationship is with a piece of software? Yeah, well if all your senses tell you have a hot chick on your lap, then you have a hot chick on your lap. <laughs> told you it wouldn't take long for all this tech to go rule 34. Hey, don't lie, you knew it would happen too, this is the internet. Getting to Double X Charter, Arnold finds out that Oliver has died due to a canine virus, and his wife wants him to go to Repet and clone them. Arnold doesn't want to, but the wife has none of that. Will you do it? No. Thank you, darling. Clara, thanks for the No, no, no. Listen, Natalie, I just won't. Women. After watching a cheesy 90s ad for their business, they take off in their, admittedly, pretty awesome Heligent vehicles. Seriously, they were missing out on a video game adaptation for this. This is like an air vehicle you might find in Cowboy Bebop or something. As they get back from dropping off snowboarders and endangering their equipment testing out their remote control devices, they get a contract from a VIP, Michael Drucker, who wants to give them a blood and eye exam, supposedly to test for drugs and stuff, but the movie already tells you it's about cloning. Come on, do the math, guys. That and the eye exam machine is on the cover of the movie. Thanks for the spoilers. Now, Arnold's friend wants him to have some time to check out Repet and spend time with his family on his birthday, but Drucker specifically asked for Arnold. I mean, Adam. Oh, who are we kidding? You'll call him Arnold. His no, friend says since Drucker and his bodyguards haven't gotten their names yet, he could use Adam's name and let him have his birthday off. Might seem like an aside, but keep the scene in the back of your head. It's important. Also, gotta say, I don't think I've ever heard the phrase yay fuck in a movie before. Drucker has an odd vocabulary. Not that I'm one to talk on that, fuck balls. Well, one weird cut later and we see they were shot up. How'd the guy know they'd fly there of all places? No idea, I guess you just knew Drucker happened to be snowboarding on that one particular mountain that day. And then we go to... What the hell? No, 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 don't, don't go to Arnold yet, go back to... Whatever that was. I'm not even sure I have a joke about that hairstyle. It's like a Star Trek extra on a Star Trek alien walking side by side. Uh, never mind. I just... So after seeing here that anime characters are make fun of, we see Adam passed out in a cab having a blurry wake-up scene and paying a $447 cab fine. Jesus Christ, either inflation is way out of hand or he went a really long ways in that cab. Between that and the $300 million a year salary of Johnny Phoenix, the inflation theory wouldn't surprise me. Oh wait, wait, go, no, no, go back again. She has bigger hair loops than Nurse Joy. What's with these sci-fi movies and predicting weird-ass hairstyles becoming the norm? Then we get our first Arnold one-liner. You save your soul, man. God doesn't want you to go in there. Don't go in there, man. When the God shouldn't have killed my dog. To which they immediately say he's an atheist and continue their protest. It's actually kind of funny because he has lots of doubts about the whole cloning thing. I think he just wanted to mess with them. After having a talk with the repet salesman who acts like he's been there already, typical salesman tactic, and even tells them they could modify Oliver if they wanted to, they say they can modify the clones now. I'm not so sure how I like that. You can make them smaller if you want, with softer teeth. Too much exposition, though. We need an Arnold reference. I might be back. There we go. You'll be back. So instead of cloning Oliver, Arnold goes off and buys a sim pal Cindy, which. Go to sleep, Cindy. Would you like to sing with me? Go to sleep. That's creepy. Come on. You have all this futuristic technology and cloning, but you can't make a human-like doll that isn't creepy as fuck. I don't buy that. 
God, I hope that virtual girlfriend Arnold's friend has doesn't look that creepy. <laughs> Let's go home. Whoa, jeez, what? Okay, then distracting transition, ahoy. This seems to be their standby for when they don't know how to transition, you which is often. I am not here. So while preparing for what to say about Oliver's death, Arnold returns home to find Oliver alive and well. He doesn't think about that anomaly for too long, though, looking in to find a clone of himself in his own house. There's someone in my house eating my birthday cake with my family, and it's not me. We know Love how the cake is the first thing he brings violation. up. A human was cloned. That human was you. Oh, hey, look, it's we Terry Crews. You. Oh, you don't know who Terry Crews is? You haven't been on the internet long enough. Just look up the Old Spice commercials, and if it's weird and you go, what the fuck just happened at the end of it? Yeah, that's probably Terry Crews. Doll. No, don't take the doll with you! Get it away! So after Arnold tases them and gets the sim pal shot... Good, at least that didn't last long. Oh, just get it out of the movie already! Then Arnold steals his own car. Or would that just be using his own car? I'm not gonna get into the semantics of ownership with clones. He leads his pursuers on what I must admit is a semi-realistic car chase. For an Arnold movie, anyways. With realistic jumps and the cars getting more and more smashed up along the way, I can give him props for that at least. The characters don't take it too seriously, though. Car chase. Cool. The pursuers finally shoot the doll's head off as it annoys the crap out of them. What, was it in the movie just so they could be needlessly cruel to it? This is how horror movies start, guys! They continue chasing Arnold with their laser guns, which seem to do whatever the hell the movie wants them to. I mean, one moment they're glancing off the car, and the next it shoots the entire car door off. Keep them on kill, you idiots! Damn it, Wally! Shut up! Okay, I don't know who this guy is, but he sounds hoarse through the whole movie. Then again, he's yelling through the whole movie. Stupid! Blow out his tires this time! I mean, someone gave him a glass of water or something. They're about to disable his car, but Arnold gives the gunman a more pressing situation to deal with. Okay, Arnold's looking a little bit crazy there. Guess it was only a matter of time. This is an Arnold movie. That was spectacular! Whoa, 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 hold on. How did Arnold get on the fence from there? Unless he jumped early and rolled into it. Couldn't have done that in midair. Ah, well, it's a Schwarzenegger film. Let's not think too hard on it. We're gonna have bigger plot holes to tackle anyways. Oh, son of a bitch. Hold my belt. Seriously, dude, it seems like you could use a cough drop or something. So they see Arnold leap off the cliff, and to their credit, they send people downriver, proving themselves not to be total idiots. Then we have another awkward transition to the next scene, which is a protest at replacement technologies. We see Drucker, the head of replacement technologies, make a speech that honestly is one of the parts of the movie that really does make you think. Suppose a ten-year-old boy lies in a hospital bed dying of liver cancer. Thanks to Dr. Weir's work, we can save that boy. Now in the next bed lies another ten-year-old boy whose parents love him just as much, only this child has an inoperable brain tumor, and you cannot clone a brain. The only way to save him would be to clone the whole person. Now, how do you tell that boy's parents that we can save the first boy, but the research that would have saved their son, it wasn't done because of a law that was passed by frightened politicians a decade ago? There's some pretty legitimate points he makes in there about the good things they can do with cloning, even if he is the villain. Hey, if you think I'm spoiling it, all you had to do was read the back of the box and they pretty much tell you. Oh, and even though we don't see Johnny Phoenix much at all in this movie, as in almost never, I think this is the only time besides the intro, he does have one good line in this movie. Johnny, that's my star quarterback. Uh, I'd say I was feeling like a million bucks, except I'd hate to take a cut and fake. <laughs> don't remind me, alright? 
Hey, admit it, that's a good one. In fact, Drucker's speech hits close to home with the Speaker of the House, who's told of the illegal human cloning they're doing and is willing to risk the huge penalties if he's caught to save his son's life. This is another moment that actually shows the effects and medicinal possibilities and thereby the merits of the cloning technology. This movie's actually doing a pretty good job of being serious. Would you consider it? Of course I would. That's the same kind of hypothetical no, no, situation. No, no, no. Don't answer so fast. He'd be facing a mandatory minimum sentence of 40 years if it ever came out. But would he be cured? He'd be exactly the same as he was before. But don't worry, it's an Arnold movie. We won't have to think long. Oh, hey, look, there he is now. Then another weird transition. Yep, we're back in Arnold territory now. You made a completely different police report an hour ago. No, I didn't. According to this, you did. And they checked your thumbprint. But it must have been the clone. Arnold tries to go down to the police station and tell them about his clone. I know it sounds of course, crazy. they think he's crazy. I can hardly believe it myself. Was your car stolen or not? Yes. So you did report it? No, it was me who took it. You stole your own car. Yep, but Hello, I'm your court-appointed virtual attorney. You don't hey, wait a minute. See, we have intelligent virtual people. What the hell was up with that sin power? Oh, forget it. The less we think about that thing, the better. <laughs> the virtual psychiatrist does give us the most hilariously fake accent of the whole movie, though. I say that because Arnold's accent is also hilarious, but it's real. Oh, Mr. Gibson. What seems to be the trouble? Do you want me to go through the whole thing now with him? You seem to be avoiding talking about your parents. Imagine, two turtles are walking through the desert. Oh, shut up! I was raised with this accent. What's your excuse? Hmm. Hmm, what? Are you going to help me now or not? Of course. The bad guys mark him as a psychiatric patient so they can go pick him up, and by the way, they misspelled override. We also see the two people from before getting cloned as a demo to the speaker, and why sin courting one's dead body isn't always the best idea. God damn it, son of a bitch! Also, I'm not quite sure how the blanks work. I mean, what if you cloned a midget? Or Shaq? Or even Arnold? How does this work? How does this work? Did I have a bunch of blanks of varying heights? Does the blank grow or shrink somehow when they're cloning the person? I mean... Never mind, they're never gonna explain it to us, are they? Also, it's kind of humorous to have this girl worrying about her hair treatments and ear piercings after she just, you know, died. I look like crap. Do you have any idea how much my hair treatments cost? Gotta pierce my damn ears again. It's like how video game players think. It's like, oh no, I died in this dungeon. I gotta start from the beginning and equip all my shit again. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, <sighs> same recurring nightmare again. I see myself in front of me and I shoot myself. I don't even know. I'm wearing a different shirt now. Son of a bitch, why are there holes in my brand new shirt? So Wiley, this guy, which I probably only remember because of Dr. Wiley, also has problems see, with his chest because of the memories of his death affecting him. Ran over me, you know? You were run over by two cars and your chest was crushed. Exactly. No wonder, right? It's in your mind. Completely crushed. As in dead. As in you have a totally new chest now. Hey, I told you Arnold would give him a more pressing situation. You thought I was just making a pun, didn't you? They come along to take care of Arnold, but he has other ideas. Yeah, he ripped up a chair bolted to the ground. See, I knew Adam would go all Arnold eventually. So why do the holding rooms have one-way screens? Especially ones that break so easily? I don't know. Oh, also he breaks Wiley's neck. Fucking every man my ass. What normal guy knows how to break someone's neck? The movie mentions he was in some war later on, but we don't know that yet. It is funny in a morbid way how they have to try and say Wiley's just fine as his head is flopping around unnaturally. Yeah, <laughs> he's totally fine. He just needs to sleep it off. Really? Even Terry Crews knows people are buying that. I mean, look at his face. We also see Adam's friend Hank being welcomed by his virtual girlfriend. Please, that's nothing. I've got a lizard soldier and a Kilrathi priestess in my holo projector. Yeah, you know the one, the one from Wing Commander's Secret Missions 2. Aw, oh, yeah. 
Ah, 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 careful with the merchandise. Jeez, oh, they get a pretty good way into it before there was a knock at the door. Oh. PG-13, everyone. So Arnold comes in completely paranoid when he hears someone in Hank's apartment. Cat! Okay, I think I'm safe this time. Finally, he shows Hank his clone. He almost kills himself, but then he backs out of it. Also, we find out Arnold likes cigars, big ol' stogies, and they're illegal in this future. Huh, maybe Cigar Dave really is right about things, the enemies of pleasure really are cracking down. Wait a minute. Or maybe this takes place in the same universe as Demolition Man. Holy shit. What if- wait, hear me out here. <laughs> hear me out here. What if... The Sixth Day, Total Recall, and Demolition Man all take place in the same universe? I really doubt I'm right, but that'd be pretty fucking awesome. Just just think about it that way. They're all in the same timeline. Kind of makes sense. Oh, and Hank's friend is kind of creepy and watches Arnold and his wife get it on. Well, actually, to his credit, he stops once they, um, get going. <laughs> He's just jealous because he only has a virtual girlfriend. Arnold and Hank go back to Hank's apartment, only for Hank to be killed by an intruder, who gets defeated because he gets distracted by the virtual girlfriend. Though it's not of the distracted by the sexy variety, so I'll give it that at least. We figure out the guy, who is the same guy who killed Drucker and Hank earlier, killed Hank, again, because he was a clone and the guy shoots himself in the head so his memories can't be extracted. Now once again I'm going to ask you to remember that little tidbit, we'll bring it up later. This leaves Arnold to deal with Wiley Terry Crews, a punk faith from Mirror's Edge and chain-smoking agent Smith, again shooting the girl's fingers off and the guy's foot off, which really is more hilarious than it should be. <laughs> Seriously, stop smoking sandpaper, dude! Arnold steals her thumb to start the car and the guy with his leg shot off bitches about his brand new boots and still stands up to fight. Systems access. You gotta pay! Those are brand new boots! I'm sorry, it's just hilarious somehow. Look, I'll have your leg! Right! Right, I'll do you for that! You what? Come here! What are you gonna do, bleed on me? I'm invincible! You're a loony. The Black Knight always triumphs! We multivision transition over to Arnold back over at Double X Charter, trying to figure out what to do, then over to... You know, this movie likes to jump around a lot. Unless you're Pseudomonas infection. Anyway, we go to Dr. Weir, the scientist behind the cloning process, who figures out his cloned wife, all of a sudden, has cystic fibrosis out of nowhere. And we figure out Drucker's plan to give the clones lethal diseases to make sure they continue to need clones and so stay loyal to Drucker's cause, like giving Johnny Phoenix liver cancer. Which is pretty ingenious, it's kind of like what Microsoft does with your software. <laughs> You know, except for the fact that you gave her cystic fibrosis out of nowhere, you fucking morons! Ugh. They just need an excuse to expose the plan. Lazy writing at its best, people. Which, of course, is impossible, considering that it's a childhood disease and... Meanwhile, we see Arnold gaining access to replacement technologies with the girl's thumb from before, smuggling something in with a cooler. Thankfully, it's Arnold. He knows how to get it past security. It's for Dr. Weir. He's doing a study on a flesh-eating virus. That's okay, you can open it up. Just try not to breathe. Yes, Arnold. Hold that weapon up for a moment before hiding it. Boy. Oh, and drop that thumb you've been using to get past security. I just dropped my pen. More thumbs today. Oh. They probably did it just for that line. Eh. I mean, I've never even seen a white light. Never seen any angels. Not Unfortunately for Arnold, the bad guys show up and, again to their credit, they deactivate her fingerprint access once they figure out Arnold's running around using it. Usually hey, I can make fun of the intelligence of the hired what? goons in these movies, what? but not these guys. 20 minutes ago. Just the mastermind plan, that's all. Area. I mean, cystic fibrosis, really? Couldn't come up with any other lethal Charlie. diseases with a time limit? Drucker still goes after them for not catching Arnold yet, though. You know, it cost me 1.2 million each time I clone you people. 
1.2 million? Alongside a $447 cab fine, that doesn't sound too bad, really. Ugh, trying to figure out what dollars are worth in here is like trying to figure out what Wulongs are worth. How much are they worth, anyway? Who knows? So Arnold gets to Dr. Weir's office and figures out how they were able to clone him, but you probably already knew that by now. Also, remember when I told you to keep in mind that Arnold, or Adam's friend, used Adam's name during that flight? If it hadn't been Arnold's birthday and his friend didn't decide to take his place, none of this would have been exposed, and we'd have a much different story, or maybe even no story at all. One little seemingly insignificant aside got all of this rolling. Nice, that's actually kind of a good one, movie. Also, those sim cordings kind of look like Blake GameCube discs, don't they? Oh, and sim cordings seem to be kind of low quality when they're being watched. You know, from this footage, it looks like Drucker got shot in the head. How'd they get his recent sim cording? I thought getting shot in the head made your memories unrecoverable. See, I told you we'd bring this up. Well, we thought it was you. Oh. So we hear that Drucker is trying to make sure no one sees Arnold as cloned because if someone figured out Drucker is a clone with the way the laws currently are, he'd lose everything, including his life since the clone would be ordered to be destroyed. Once again, you probably have figured this out already. This movie really likes to explain things you've already figured out. Unfortunately, Drucker's men are... track down Arnold's family and take them away with... um... collar controlled Rottweilers, I guess. I... Don't really know how that works, but it never comes up again, so... Whatever. Yeah, you're getting it now. The other Arnold tries calling 911, but it's about as effective as the system in Saints Row 2. Yeah, I know. Your yes or no answers will help us in directing police services to assist you. Come on. Are you reporting a felony? Yes. Thank you for reporting a felony. Come on. Is the felony in progress now? Yes. Thank you. Is there a current danger of bodily harm to you or others? Yes! Stay calm. Emergency personnel are on the way. It doesn't even assume it's an emergency when the call is cancelled. Nice. Real nice. The damn minivan. Yes or no answers. Your report has been timed out or cancelled at your request. The future, where 911 works like that shitty tech support hotline. You've got but to now we have both Arnolds together. You know, wasn't there another hands, Arnold in Total Recall too? A big surprise. You are not you. You are me. No shit. But here they're working together. Surely That's we'll fine. get into some crazy shit now. Oh Christ, the two Arnolds are making thermite. This'll turn out well. We've got years of experience that keeps us safe. No, these aren't professionals. These are maniacs with thermite. They arrange a trade of Arnold's family for Drucker's sim court, but of course, Drucker's goons try to take him down. No, not the hella jet. That's the coolest thing in this movie. Really, that thing gets shot down with laser pistols? That's... kinda lame. Needs more armor. Luckily, they were smart enough to be remote controlling the craft from the other craft. So, Dr. Weir, whose first name is Griffin... Wait a minute, seriously. Griffin Weir? Johnny Phoenix? All these cool names and Arnold gets stuck with Adam Gibson. Anywho, Griffin tries to confront Drucker about his plan of limited lifespan clones and actually spawns another decently dramatic scene. Dr. Weir tries to quit, but his request promptly gets shot down. And obviously you won't remember this conversation. You're welcome. The two Arnolds touch down and use the charter contract from before to get in, which is blank, by the way. Yeah, that'd totally fly by security. You know, for being high security, the security in this place really fucking sucks. Everything's the first Arnold starts going on a rather nonsensical rampage through the building, which I guess that's what Arnold's good at. 
knocking out a bunch of security cameras. He must have shut out a power box. He's trashing the whole security. All right, we got him trapped. Where <laughs> Wait a minute! How come when it's bullets with physical ammo, Arnold never has to reload, ever? But then when it's an energy weapon that has the potential to be firing all day, Arnold has to reload now! And actually, Arnold's the only one that has to reload in this movie, that's like backwards from every other Arnold movie! Weird. The first Arnold gets captured where Drucker tells Arnold that he's actually the clone. He's not the clone. You are. <laughs> I want you to ask yourself something. Do you remember anything after being scanned by my bodyguard? Now I need to check your vision, place your chin here, look straight ahead. Do you actually remember changing places with your friend? Hey, buddy, wake up. We're here. We're Glenn Long. <laughs> Always wanted to use this one. I think we're a clone now. The manufacturer is from out of town. I think we're a clone now Cause you can make a Mac with ten dollars down I think we're a clone now The screens from Microsoft are the only sound I think we're Yeah, I may not have too many movie references, but I have some obscure jokes of my own to pull out. Now they could have left it there and left us wondering which Arnold was the clone, which are hopefully told apart by that sweet bomber jacket. Kind of like the ending of Total Recall, where we're not entirely sure whether it's a dream or not. But no, they had to go with these orange things under their left eyelid that come up when they're cloned. <sighs> okay, where do I begin with this one? Why would you have physical proof that you're a clone? Especially since if you're a clone, you get destroyed. I mean, is that a side effect? Is that on purpose? I mean, I don't get it. I think the bad guys just put orange pieces of lint in their eyes to fuck with Arnold. I mean, I don't know how they got the lint in Arnold's eye, but it's, it's the only thing that makes sense. Now, hold on, I think my DVD's skipping. Oh no, just more weird-ass editing. It's getting annoying by now. Arnold and Drucker have a battle of words, which ends with this little bit. If you really believe that, then you should clone yourself while he's still alive. Why's that? So I can understand your unique perspective. No. So you can go fuck yourself. Once again, PG-13, where we've almost had a sex scene with a hologram and have used fuck twice now. Obviously, we're in good hands at the rating board. They force Arnold to be syncorded again with what I like to call the onion skinning punch, and figure out that he purposely doctored his own syncording. Well, they do figure it out, so I guess Arnold didn't do it all that Wait. well. What? They staged that scene for our benefit. Yep. Still, it's enough time for the second Arnold. Boy, that sounds weird. To come in after all the cameras have been destroyed and rescue his family. Not before putting the thermite bomb on the liquid oxygen tanks, though. No, Terry Crews! Older block of body wash is so powerful it can block me off for 16 hours. It's blocking powers as powerful as me. But that still couldn't save you from Arnold. Wait a minute. Does that mean Arnold is stronger than any deodorant? Ew. The first Arnold manages to get Drucker mortally wounded thanks to Wiley's bad aim and jumps through the window, which actually looks like it hurts, unlike most action movies. Huh, go figure. At least he had the leather jacket on, I guess. Also, we do get a line where we get a pretty good cross of typical Arnold and everyman Arnold. Don't move. My daughter is right inside the door. Now, I don't want to expose her to any graphic violence. She already gets enough of that from the media. Put your weapons down. Nice and easy. Good. Now, when you go inside, you say, Have a nice flight. Have a nice flight, little girl. Friends of Daddy's. That's pretty good. Though also kind of ironic, this movie isn't all that graphically violent. No, Pulse is strong. He'll be up and around in no time. Well, uh, just get him to the hospital. Ugh, well, Easy. with the gunshots, anyways. So Arnold takes off with his family as other Arnold tries to escape the building, evading detection by using the air meant for the clones. How does he know which one is the air? Yeah, who knows.
Drucker attempts to clone himself amid all the chaos, which results in a weak, incomplete clone. She's not even gonna wait until I die. Would you? Blood with Jack, Jesus Christ. Wow, I'm kind of an asshole. Arnold makes sure his family's safe before going to help out other Arnolds, who, after some bantering and some ass kicking, puts the two Druckers in a rather awkward position. Oh, no, Arnold, please don't. When I say you should screw yourself, I didn't mean for you to take it literally. Oh, oh you didn't need to actually say it. We got the joke, really. No. Yeah. So we have our typical Arnold movie ending. We have a shootout. Arnold escapes thanks to other Arnold. Okay, that's. Joker takes the express route to the lobby, and the whole building goes up in flames. Gee, hope there was no innocent people in there. Oh, and they managed to stall a helicopter. Yes, it is possible to stall a helicopter, but that's a retreating blade stall from sharp turns or low rotor speed at high air speeds. They are nowhere near a high air speed. The jet configuration is meant to take care of that problem anyways. As if there wasn't enough problems with how technology works in this movie. Just like a the two Arnolds banter for a moment, the clone goes to run a double X charter branch in Argentina, Arnold's family takes care of Hank's repet cat now, and everything seems to be back to normal. Or at least as close to normal as it can be with the world having two Schwarzeneggers. The end. So that was the sixth day. How was it? I don't think it was that bad. I mean, there's the makings of a pretty good sci-fi story in there, along with a pretty good Arnold movie, but unfortunately it doesn't quite seem to know what it wants to be, so it ends up being an okay Arnold movie with an okay sci-fi plot that likes to explain what you've already figured out. It's decent, though it's not as good or as crazy as Total Recall. Honestly, that's the worst part about all of this. For all the great ideas, it just turns into an okay movie. Not sure if I'd go hunting it down, but if you do happen to find it, it may be worth a watch. Oh shit, that better not be the Nostalgia Critic. Look, I'm sorry for stealing it. Holy shit, it's me. Why do I keep having that dream where I come in and shoot myself? Oh. Get a hold of yourself, man. Maybe I need to see somebody about that. Oh well, time to work on that review for the sixth day. The sixth day review dot mp4? Huh. Looks like I made it already. I don't remember doing that, but it looks good to me. Huh. Oh well. What the hell, let's upload it. I kinda chuckle when I think back. We helped them build a carbon copy Mac. Now they're Macs everywhere until they're scared and they're hoping that the Pentium can stay ahead of Game Boy and I say, I think we're a clone now. Pentiums will only sell with a big discount. I think we're a Intel's lost track of P6 transistor count.